it's day three of our 12 days of crochetmas. So, so far we made a wombat on day one and a blue ringed octopus on day two. So let's open box three and see what we're making today. Ooh, it's down here. So make sure you watch to the end of the video to get a hint as to what we're making tomorrow. But the hint for box number three was that this creature's venom is unaffected by morphine and studying it has led scientists to develop better painkillers. So let's see what that is. And it is, of course, a little platypus. So the hint is in refer reference to the poison spur that male platypi have behind their back foot. A lot of people don't even realise that these are poison type. Remember to post photos of your finished creatures to the Complicated Knots Discord or on Instagram using the tag hashtag 12 days of crochet to be in with a chance to win a digital copy of all 12 patterns. So let's get into it. Okay, so to make our platypus, you're going to need eight ply, 100% acrylic yarn in one color, as well as a little bit of white, just to add some details to his eyes. You're also going to need a pair of nine millimeter safety eyes, a 3.5 millimeter hook, scissors, pins and needles, a couple of stitch markers or bobby pins, and some stuffing. Okay, so I'm making my platypus in this pale pink today. And we're going to start by making his bill. So his bill starts with a magic ring of six, Then an increase into each stitch around to bring us up to 12. Then we're going to work four single crochet and an increase. Then two single crochet, another increase, and then four single crochet to finish the round. So your piece should be 14 stitches around at this point here. And for row four, we're going to work a single crochet into each of them. So 14 in total. Like so. So in row five, we're going to be working 14 back post single crochet. When you crochet, you're normally working through the loops on top of the piece. But for back post, it means that we're working around the post of the stitch by inserting our hook around it from the back of the work. So there is our, our first one. We're going to be working 14 in total. Basically, insert your hook through the gap, around the post and through the next gap, yarn over, pull up a loop, and yarn over and complete your stitch. So that's two, and we're going to do 12 more. So there we go. We are then just going to work our final row, which consists of two decreases, we're then going to work two single crochet three togethers. So how you work those is by inserting your hook through the front loop of the next three stitches, yarning over and pulling through all three loops, and then yarning over and completing your decrease. So that was one, and then we have one more to work. And two decreases to finish the row. And finish off. So tuck any loose ends inside. Then we're gonna take our tail and Pull it through the front loop only of the remaining six stitches. And pull tight to close. Tuck that end away inside as well. So if you flatten that out so that the loops created by those back post stitches form one edge, that is our little platypus bill. Pop that to one side for now. So I'm going to grab my pink again and we're going to work up the head of the platypus now. So for the next three rows, we're going to build up to 18 stitches around and then work three rows of 18 single crochet in each row for a combined total of 54 stitches, like so. So you should see here that we have this little cup that is 18 stitches around. So then for row seven, we're going to work a single crochet, an increase, two single crochet, and then single crochet three together, just like we did on the bill three single crochet, then another single crochet, three together, two single crochet, an increase, a single crochet, and then an increase. So that should leave your row at 17 stitches around. Then row eight is a single crochet, an increase, two single crochet, 
Then we're going to single crochet three together. One single crochet. Single crochet three together. Two single crochet. An increase. A single crochet. And then two increases to finish off our round. So there we are at the end of round eight. So then in row nine, we're going to be creating our platypus feet. So we're going to start by working 12 single crochet around to where we want the first foot to be. And then in the next stitch, we're going to be creating our first foot. When you look straight down at your stitches, you should see that we've got two loops on top. We've got one on the side closest to us and one on the side furthest away. So the one closest to us is known as the front loop. And we're going to be working all of the stitches for this first foot into the same front loop. So this foot starts with a half double crochet, which you make by yarning over your hook, inserting your hook through that front loop, yarning over and pulling up a loop, leaving three loops on your hook. We're then going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. And there is our half double crochet. We're then going to work a pico. So a pico is when you chain three, then you insert your hook through the first chain that you've made and work a slip stitch into it. So there is our little half double crochet and pico pairing. And we're going to work three of those into the same front loop. So that's one, two, and three. And then we're going to work one final half double crochet into that same front loop to finish off our foot. There is our first platypus foot. I'm just going to fold it forwards grab one of my stitch markers and we're going to just mark the back loop of the stitch that we didn't work into. So that's that. That's the back loop of the front loop we worked our foot into. We are then just going to work four single crochet back through both loops to finish off our row. So there we are at the end of row nine. So in row 10, we're going to be creating our second foot. So it starts with one single crochet. Then in the next stitch in the front loop only, we're going to be creating a second foot identical to our first. So that means three pairings of a half double crochet and a pico. And then a final half double crochet to finish the foot. Like so, then fold it forward, grab another stitch marker and mark that back loop. We're going to be needing those back loops as we work around our platypus. So then back again, working in both loops, we are going to work two single crochet and then an increase and then two repeats of a single crochet and an increase. That's one repeat. And then we've got another one. Then two single crochet. And then we're going to be working a decrease. Now what's special about this decrease is that it involves using the last remaining stitch before our first foot. So there, and then the back loop that we marked as well. So those are the two loops I'm decreasing through. I'm yarning over and pulling up a loop through both of those loops and then yarning over and completing my decrease. And we no longer need that marker. We are then going to identify the first single crochet after the foot and starting there, work four single crochet across the stomach to get back to our starting point. So starting row 11, we work a single crochet in the final available stitch of the belly. And then we're going to be working another decrease. So this time the first loop of that decrease is the marked back loop that we have there. And while I did the first one as an invisible, I'm going to do this one as like a standard decrease so that you can see both. So I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop through that one. And then going to identify the first stitch after the foot. You might need to like contort the foot out of the way to get there. Insert my hook through it and yarn over and pull up a loop. And then yarn over and pull through all three loops to finish off my decrease and remove my stitch marker. And with that done, we're just going to work 16 single crochet around our platypus to finish our row. Now at this point, you should stop and count and check to make sure that you have 18 stitches in your round. And I do, thankfully. So once you've confirmed your count, we're going to stop and insert our eyes. So when it comes to platypi, the feet go on the ground and their eyes go on the front of the head. So we'll be attaching the bill over the top of that magic ring. Like so, 
and you can pin that into place to help you identify exactly where to put your eyes as well. I have my eyes here and I know that they're going to be inserted into row two, so one and two. We want them to be above where the magic ring is, so the ring is there and then we want them to sit above that. And you want sort of two or three visible stitches in between them as well. They're fairly wide. So I've moved one of mine out to row three just to get them a little bit wider. And then the beak will go sort of in the middle over the top of them a little bit just like that. So I'm happy with that positioning and I'm going to snap my backs on now. And with that done, we are going to work row 12, which is just 18 single crochet around. Which brings us to row 13. And in row 13, we're going to start making his back feet. So we start by working 15 single crochet around to where we want the first foot to be. And then in the next stitch, we're going to work another foot, same as we worked our front feet. So that is all worked in the front loop, three pairs of a half double crochet and a picot. And then a half double crochet to finish off the foot. Mark the back loop we didn't use, and then work two single crochet to finish off that round. Then in row 14, you're going to work one single crochet and we're going to work our final foot in the next stitch. Then we're going to work 12 single crochet around his back. And then we're going to work a decrease using the last remaining stitch before the foot and the back loop that we've marked behind the foot and remove your stitch marker. So identify the first stitch after the foot and we're going to work two single crochet to finish that round. So we have just one foot left to lock in and then we just need to make his tail. So we are nearly done. So for row 15, we're going to start by working a single crochet into his tummy. And then we're going to work another decrease, this time starting with the back loop behind that fourth foot and then the stitch, the first stitch after the foot is our second stitch. So that's where we're decreasing. Then we're going to work a single crochet, two decreases, another single crochet, another two decreases. Oh, don't need that anymore. And then four single crochet to finish the round. So at this point, we are going to stuff the head and body and you can stuff them fairly firmly. And from this point on, we're going to be working up his tail, which we won't be stuffing at all. So then we are just going to work the next seven rows to build up the little spoon of a tail. And finish off. So just like with the bill, we're going to weave our remaining tail around to close off this little opening. Like so, so now we have a platypus nugget and his bill. So I'm going to grab my pins. Now you'll note when you flatten this out as suggested, the magic ring is closer to one side than the other. So the side that it's closest to is the side that goes against your head. And we're just going to line that up over the top of the magic ring on the head and body piece. Chuck a couple of pins in to secure it, then use a little bit more of our pink to sew it on. And trim off any excess and don't forget to tuck in your ends. Then I'm just going to grab my white and we're just going to stitch on some little whites to his eyes. This is the same way as we did for the wombat and the octopus.
And there is our little platypus friend. So that's it for today. I hope you had fun making him with me. So your hint for day four is, this animal has been blamed for knocking out Australia's internet service. Leave your guesses in the comments below. Okay, bye.